Welcome back to Switch to Linux. So it is Monday and time for another Top 5 Linux. So we are back on Ubuntu Mate today. I wanted to identify the top five tools that I use on Ubuntu Mate. Now I realize that my Mate build is for media management, uh, backup organization. Uh, basically the idea here is that within my office I have a bunch of music files, a bunch of photos, a um, bunch of video files, a bunch of documents things like that and and I also have cell phones with contact lists and and things like that and what the objective here is is to have one operating system that can easily manage all of that stuff so I don't have things going all over the place um, now I have a lot of things on the NAS drive but not everything particularly in the field of documents but I do keep a copy of all documents on this computer so I can actually easily duplicate this drive uh, onto another system should I need to and have an extra copy of it laying around so with that in mind, I wanted to identify for me uh, the top five tools. I did not put these in any order other than the order that I came up with them. So for my top pick or my number one pick, I guess, is um, I needed a way that I could record off of the monitor. So I'm playing an audio file and I want to be able to record that audio file off of the sound system. Well, the built-in uh, built sound profile inside of Ubuntu does not allow you to do that. So if you install Pulse Audio Volume Control, this is a volume control system that gives you a whole lot more functionality and features. And I'm not going to mess with a whole lot of it, but you can see that if, the, and if an application is running, you can see here that sim, uh, Simple Screen Recorder is recording, and it is recording audio from my media condensed microphone. So uh, with that, what this allowed me to do is to turn on more options in order to allow me to actually go into Audacity and record off of the monitor line. You could not do that uh, with the basic sound system. So this one here is a very nice feature with a whole lot of different things. You can see here that the um, web camera also has its own microphone, which I never use because it just doesn't sound very good. Um, but you'll see all of the different functionalities in here. You can do a whole lot of different setup and all sorts of just other functionalities and features. Now, this is something that you will have to install. Again, it's Pulse Audio Volume Control, I believe. Um, so you can look for that, and it is inside the repositories. So you can just find it, download, and install it. And this will give you a whole lot more options, especially if your recording is not doing quite so good. So my second pick is the K address book. And I've identified the, the K address book in the past, but the reason I wanted to bring this up, now there are a couple different address books for Linux. Uh, there is also one that comes in the GNOME desktop, which I tried to install that one first. It doesn't work on Mate. Um, but the K address book does work on Mate. And so with this, uh, the reason I like this is because I have my phones, but I do not like to use the cloud accounts. I do not have cloud accounts on anything, whether I have Android phones or, or iPhones, I don't use cloud services with any of my phones. And that to me is important that I'm maintaining it because think of it, suppose your account gets suspended and you drop your phone. You may have very well lost all your contacts. This allows me to keep a hard copy, not only on my NAS drive, but also on this external backup drive. Now I can take my contacts out of this and I can push them to an iPhone. I can push them to an Android phone. I can even print them out so I have a, a printout of my uh, of my phone numbers and addresses. So in case that uh, you know, in case I'm I'm out and about and traveling, I might keep that list of known addresses in the glove box of my car. So if I do run into an emergency, there is a, a paper contact list that is sitting there. Now I have this turned off right now. You can see these check marks here. If I just hit the check marks, you'll see, you can turn those on. I'm not going to do the personal one because that'll expose all my personal contact names. Uh, but what happens is you can organize these in a different group. So I have them organized into personal and business. And the business ones will go on my business phones, which I use K address book to push contacts even to this old flip phone. So um, you can use this to manage and store all your contacts. You can you know, update this when you meet new people or, or, or things. Now, is this, you know, a lot of people would have a, a, an issue like, oh, you're doing more things. Well, you can even 
you can even take your contacts from this. Now, the iPhone, you need third-party apps, but you can take your new contacts, export them, and import them into K Address Book. So if you do, uh, if you are out and about and you have, for example, an Android where you can easily download your contacts to a file, you can import those new contacts into this. For me, I don't make enough contacts that I put into my phone that really necessitates me going in and adding everybody into uh, into my system. So regardless, suppose you add 10 people a month into your system. You can't find time for updating your files for 10 minutes. And that's kind of gets back into that intentional living with your, with your data files. Now, again, this does need installed. Um, you need, uh, you do need to install it. It does install from the repositories. Uh, but this one does work on Mate. Um, and this will allow me to manage all my cloud services across every device that I have without having to utilize the, the various proprietary company cloud servers that are out there. And it's really all not, not a lot, lot that, you know, it's not all that difficult to, to manage the, um, the contacts. Now, the next pick that I have is actually what I'm using to record this video. Now, I have my camera up here, which is GVC view, but what I'm actually recording the video with is simple screen recorder. So I will actually use various different screen recorders. I'm not specifically tied or married to one in particular uh, one in particular screen recorder. I use OBS on my main system because I get a I get a whole lot more ability to float back and forth. Um, I can full screen camera views, slide banners on as I'm doing it. If I'm using simple screen recorder, all the banners that you'll see on the bottom of this one, the banners on this is actually put in in post production. Uh, but when I'm using OBS, most of the time, I'm actually putting all of those banners in as I'm actually recording the video. So I don't even need to, to worry about uh, doing post-production stuff. I just record it and, you know, re record it, add the intro, and uh, put it up online. This one here will enable me to do that. Now, I can't show you all of the settings because it is recording, but Simple Screen Recorder is just that. It is simple. Um, some of the repositories, I think this is now in the Debian repositories, uh, last I knew, um, but in Ubuntu, I'm not sure if it's in the repositories yet. I've traditionally installed this with a PPA, and if you actually just go right onto the website, just get online and, and do a search for um, uh, do a search for it. And I just touch my cables back there. I got to make sure my sound's still working. Um, hey, I don't want to use Google. I want to use um, so just do a, an internet search for simple screen recorder. And you see it's this one here, uh, Martin Burt, I believe is his name, um, and slash simple screen recorder. And then right here you can um, you can install it. So if you're using uh, Debian, you can install it just from the official repositories. Um, Ubuntu, it looks like you still do need to install these. Uh, so it looks like he does have his site updated, even Ubuntu 17.04. So just add these repositories. That's what I did on, on my Ubuntu builds like this one and on my uh, Linux Mint, which is based on Ubuntu. So you do all that. And then that way you can record your kitty cat. <laughs> all right. Um, so, um, that is how you would install it. Just, uh, go in, in here. Uh, add the uh, PPAs for it. Let's see. Oh, okay, it is in the official repositories. Uh, it's the older versions of Ubuntu. It's not. So if if you if you run the app get install simple screen recorder and it says you can't that it doesn't find the uh, the package, then just go ahead and add the repository first. I I was not reading that closely enough. I just saw the commands there and I had assumed it was. <laughs> it's not working. Oh well. Me and my assumptions. Um, but anyway, uh, you can install a simple screen recorder now on the Ubuntu builds from uh, from the repository, but you can also uh, install it with the PPAs should you uh, need to do that. So that's simple screen recorder. When you run it, it's very easy. You just pick your audio imports input source. You pick your video input source, and then you go over. I always enable this preview here so I can see what I'm doing, and then just go ahead and hit the start record. You'll see there's a pause button up here. So you hit start, hit pause, and then when I'm finally done, I'll push save, and then move this over into the other computer for post-production. 
Okay, so number four I picked out is the backup utility. This comes pre-installed on Ubuntu uh, operating systems. You can actually toggle this switch on and it will do automatic backups, in which case you can restore backups. Uh, you can um, uh, do an, a backup on the fly or you can schedule your backups. And what I like about this application that the Mint application for backup still has not yet resolved, as of my knowledge, is that this will actually enable you to save it to a, uh, it will enable you to save it to a, um, uh, a NAS drive or any network storage. So downside on the Ubuntu or, uh, or on the, uh, the Linux Mint backup system, it only can do the backup to the same drive. This will actually enable you to actually back it up. You can see here I'm on a Windows share. The server is my Open Media Vault, which is my NAS server, and it's going into my folder here. And then if I need to type in a username or anything else, I can do that. Now, when it runs the backup, you have the option to run it in the clear, or you have the option to run it as a password encrypted. Um, <laughs> Kitty had to go. Um, so you can do that. And then of course, here's the folders it is not gonna include. Here's the folders it is going to include. So it'll take what's included here minus these guys here, which you'll see that um, uh, are also included in the home folder. But this will enable you to run automatic backups of your system and, and push them to a network's drive. Now the other thing that, uh, suppose you don't have a NAS system, uh, you have the ability to install it or push it to an, uh, an S3 cloud, uh, a Google Cloud, Rackspace Cloud, or any FTP, SSH, um, custom locations, or local folders. So this backup utility is very robust. Always make sure that you have a good backup strategy in place. You do not want to get to the point where where you realize that um, you know life sucks because you don't have backups. <laughs> make sure you back stuff up. All right, so my fifth program again I, I have talked about this one in the past uh, in a little bit more detail than we're going to do it today but I want to mention Calibri ebook manager uh, so this is a, a cool system because it is a cross-platform system Ooh, let me fix my camera there we go uh, this is a cross-platform so you can get Calibri for uh, Windows Mac or Linux so no matter what system you are on, you will have a, an option to install this. Hopefully that you're, you're considering at least doing some of your personal storage stuff on a Linux system. Um, but what I like about this is it's not just for eBooks. You can manage PDFs and other documents in here as well. And as a simple little test here, uh, what I did is um, I, wanted to, I wanted to play around with the, um, the chemistry texts uh, I was talking, I think it was yesterday on my uh, tinfoil hat time, one of the issues with the um, uh, with the, some of the chemistry texts and stuff for the textbooks are getting too expensive. So what I did is I downloaded the high resolution OpenStax uh, college chemistry textbook here. So if you are an academic geeky type, check out OpenStax.org openstax and uh, you can uh, actually find a whole lot of very high quality um uh, very high quality textbooks from various subjects. I was a chemist and so I wanted to have a look at this guy here and potentially get rid of some textbooks off of my bookshelf over there. Um, so what I did is I downloaded the high res copy of this and then what you do in Calibri is I just come up here hit add book and I added it and then what I tested though is the ability to convert it. Now this is a 300 megabyte PDF and so um, what I wanted to do is see how it works. Whoa, don't do that. Uh, the the ebook reader here, um, I think this is F, F book reader here is, uh, one of the things I don't like about it is it seems to stretch the, uh, stretch the book. So you gotta make sure that you have the right size, at least the images. It does not do that for the text, but the images. Uh, uh, there we go. Yeah, so you'll see what happens if you're on uh, various sizes. So you'll see here that um, um, the 
version here, it's, it does seem like it a, has a, a couple little bugs in the conversion, but simply all I did is I imported the PDF and then I exported it. But this is, uh, this is a, a decent format to send to an ebook reader. I'd probably use the PDF if I had the option. But regardless, uh, we, do have, um, we do have the textbook here. And to show you how this works, um, I did download the other one that I did not yet install, and that's the Astronomy. This one is actually the low resolution astronomy book. So you see what this guy looks like. And let's just scroll down and find some images, see what the low res images look like. So even the low res don't look all that bad. All right. So what we're going to do here is just come up here, hit the add book. And I'm going to grab the astronomy low quality, hit the open, and then you'll see it will import that book into my library. Now, if I do want a, um, if I want to convert this into a um, an EPUB, now most of your readers for your devices will take a PDF. I'd probably just keep it as a PDF. But if you do need to convert it to an EPUB or anything else, you can just right click, uh, right click, hit convert books individually, and then you can choose the output format. So you can see all sorts of output formats here. So I'm just going to go with the EPUB and push OK. Now. The, um, the 300 megabyte one actually took me about 10 or 12 minutes to convert. So I'm not sure how long this will take to convert, but just let it run and it will convert itself. And then what happens is once that's done converting is, um, nope, show all jobs. I was trying to get that out of my way. No. Okay. When you click on, over a book, you'll see under the formats here, it'll tell you the formats that you have. Now, the thing that I like about this, uh, having the books installed in here, is if you come up here and you turn on your content server, this will actually turn on a little web server embedded inside of here. And then if you come on down to your port right here, you can just type this port into whatever device you are on. So as long as, as long as my phone and my computer are on the same network, I can just type in this address. Actually, I will have to do it on iPhone. You have to do it from Safari. You can't do it from Firefox. I think that that's a, a decent enough uh, little... Okay, let's make sure I typed all the numbers in right. Push go. And then you'll see what I have on my screen here is it gives me a list of all of the books on here. And then all I need to do is if I want this, uh, the PDF here, I just click on the PDF button. And then what you can do is you can uh, open this in whatever device happens to manage a PDF. Now this is a 300 megabyte file, so I probably don't want to do that, but um, that is a, a very nice feature of the system is it will allow you to move any of your eBooks or PDFs, other documents through a simple uh, content server across your, your various devices. So that's why I really like Calibri. It's, it's a whole lot more than just a, a simple ebook manager. It really does a whole lot more than that. So uh, with that said, those are my uh, top five tools that I use on my Ubuntu Mate. So let me know what the tools you like are down below. And join us on Monday night for Linux top five videos. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.